Hello and welcome to ATP Report. It's the Katie and Barry show. And our favorite UK resident, Katie Hopkins, is in the United States coming to us from beautiful, sunny Florida. Welcome, Katie. <laughs> Thank you very much. I feel very lucky and very blessed to be sat here looking out at the beautiful ocean. I tell you, people in Florida are on to something, Barry. I love Florida and considering what's going on in the capital and we're going to talk about it. You're very lucky you escaped today, young lady. <laughs> Absolutely right. Although my, my sense from being there is it's not as dramatic as it's being made to sound by places like CNN. Well, speaking of which, while uh, we were getting ready to come on, I was uh, watching the live feed from DC and it's a replay of the insanity show of last year and the year before and the year before. I actually saw one of the uh, famous Dem representatives stand up and brag about how he started impeachment articles against President Trump uh, two months after President Trump was in office before he'd even had time to do anything. And then he bragged about every single time he's introduced an impeachment resolution as if it was as inconsequential as what are we picking up for lunch. So bottom line is, Trump leaves office in a week, if my calendar's right. Why are they rushing to impeach him again? Well, as I if think they're going to get him out of office early? Yeah, you're, you're so right. I mean, watching it, I'm watching what you're watching. I, I, I assume many of us are. And, you know, this rank hypocrisy of Maxine Waters standing there, uh, casting aspersions about Trump when we know very well that she was the one that was telling the mob to go get his cabinet. You know, people standing up for their 30 seconds or one minute. No one's listening to anyone. No one's really written those words themselves. They're just looking for a round of applause. They want something they can crop and put on their social media later. And also listening to that place, give applause to people who agree with them, but shout down people who don't. What is that about? Since when do we just applaud people that we happen to agree with? Um, so horrible to see, horrible to see the Constitution being wrecked in this fashion, and horrible to see impeachment, as you say, being trivialized as if, as if it's a trip to Starbucks. Where is the process? Where is the investigation? Where's the eyewitnesses? You know, all of this glamour. I was here being shot at, you know, all of the drama. Where's the facts and where's the reality? Well, yeah, the, the critical question you just touched on it a second ago, Katie, uh, one of the GOP members stood up and said, I'm sorry, um, we're impeaching the president of the United States in this debate. Where is a witness, even one single witness that took part in the breach of the Capitol and is willing to come into this chamber and say, I did it because the president wanted me to or because the president told me to and the guy was quiet for a minute and it was crickets they don't have one single solitary bit of evidence other than we hate that guy and we've got to run through an impeachment because god forbid he serves out the next week in office hmm. absolutely it seems to me barry they've made it their aim they're going to brand the president as the only president to be impeached twice that's all they want. It's the label they want so they can try and discredit the last four years and all the great work that was done. And what, as you're absolutely rightly saying, you know, I was asking kind of a, a broader question. Where were the individuals who were at the rally peacefully, who knew nothing about the Capitol uh, building and what went on there? Where was the media for those guys? You know, that's they just cut off the voices, don't they, of those that don't say, don't speak according to the script. And here's the, here's the big question. Uh, the Senate has made it clear that they won't even be back until the day before inauguration, which means they couldn't even consider an impeachment until the 20th, which, by the way, is inauguration day, right? So what is this about in regards to when it gets to the Senate? Impeachment is to remove from office someone unfit for office. If the guy is out of office, 
That's like digging up the dead guy in the cemetery so you can shoot him again. Yeah, absolutely. I think the Senate leader has said um, very pragmatic and very practical at uh, 1 p.m. on the 20th, which is exactly the moment that that pass over to Biden will have occurred, making it, as you say, utterly meaningless as other than an exercise in futility and an exercise in sounding off by members of the House. Well, let, let's talk about the other side of the equation, Katie. Those representatives are sitting in the people's house to do the people's business. I'm referring to the House of Representatives. Where do you think Americans are at this point? Um, Republicans are so disgusted. They're talking about some of them on the right, the conservative movement of saying, to hell with these guys, we're gonna start our own party. Um, which very may very well may happen, which will guarantee the Republicans will never win again. The last time that happened, Ross Perot prevented George Bush, the older one, from being reelected, and that put Clinton in office. Splitting the party never works. Where do you think the public sits right now? The Dems and the Republicans out in mid-America. Mm, it's so funny you say that, Barry. I was just talking earlier to someone and one of the things that's really grating me about listening to these idiots, if I may, as a respectful outsider, is they keep using the phrase for the people or we the people. And, and I want to kind of yell at them, you know, that the distance between them in that chamber and the people has probably never been greater. For 80 million Americans, what, what relevance do those individuals have? And as I talk to you, you know, looking out at, at the Florida uh, sort of beachfront here, people are just getting on with their lives, trying to make things work, trying to keep a job, trying to keep money coming in. This nonsense is exactly the sort of thing that turns people off from politics. Oh boy, does it ever. And let's talk about the specifics. I mean, you were there last week mm. and we did a show, a series of shows in the last couple of days with Will Johnson that was there. And I've gotten probably a dozen, maybe more emails and messages from people that were there. As you've described the MAGA assembly when Trump spoke, you said it was peaceful, it was family oriented, it was moms, dads, wives, kids, grandparents, and the riot was a mile away. And as you said, it happened before Trump even spoke. Do I have that right? Yeah, absolutely right, Barry. Two very separate, two distinct events. And many, many people went home in the end of the day or earlier in the day because they were cold, they had nowhere to go. And it wasn't until they turned on their TV. It wasn't until they got reception on their phone, because of course, no reception, all those people, that they saw what had gone on. And they could hardly believe it because they were only, what, a few miles away. And yet they knew nothing about any of it. I think that's you know, such an important point to make. And the next day they peacefully went home. Uh, and I actually, my heart goes out for them because a lot of those people used their money to fly to the capital, to buy a hotel room, uh, and now look at the way they've been treated. You know, they were there because they're loyal and because they wanted to believe and have hope. And now they've been smeared and they had nothing to do with any of this. Does, does the truth matter anymore? As I'm listening to you, I mean, you were physically there and you saw it was a happy patriotic day. It could have been the 4th of July, except it was cold. Uh, I saw the thousands of American flags and people hugging and marching and singing and praying. It was very, very calm and peaceful. And they even cleaned up after themselves. And when I look at the summer of violence and death and destruction and mayhem, there wasn't one single hearing in the House or the Senate to condemn anybody that did any of that. And now President Trump is somewhere up there along with Hitler, Stalin, Mao, Pol Pot, and other great criminals in world history. And I, and I mean these analogies, because that's the names that are being thrown about in regards to Trump. Relating to an event that he wasn't at, that he didn't promote, that he didn't suggest. 
have we gotten to the point where the truth no longer matters? Well, I, uh, of course, I'm always going to be a believer, but I think two important things, Barry. Uh, number one, being inside the offices of Congress people that you and I know and respect, uh, one of the things that was made very clear to me is the level of hostility now against the Congress men and women who are still standing with Trump or standing for the truth. You know, we see images of them not going through the metal detector or not wearing a mask. It's this mob trying to get them out on the basis of insurrection or whatever. And the second thing, and I think this is the uplifting bit we always look for, Louis Gohmert, chief of staff. She said, you know, because I was, a, I was forlorn uh, when I arrived at that office. And she says, Katie, you know, we just live our truth every day and every day you live your truth you're walking in the light and I find that really uplifting like every day is a new day every day we tell our truths and we recognize that for a lot of people out there we're a long way from those truths you know really good advice not the easiest thing in these dark days Katie to remember follow and live by but it's certainly something to aspire to so uh, thanks for sharing that with us. And thanks for coming on today, as usual, for Katie and Barry's chat fest about politics, um, as crazy as they might be. And thank you to our, all our audience out there in ATP land to remind you to please sign up for our text message alert system. Send the simple message truth and uh, address it to the number 88202 push send. You'll be signed up for free. You'll get all of our content. Katie, Barry and everybody else at ATP for free on your cell phone or go to our website, americantruthproject.org, sign up there. And either sign up will get you a couple chapters of my new book because you asked for free. For Katie and me, thanks for joining us.